I'm Mark Larson with uh, Eurobricks. Um, we did this year the Tree of Worlds. It is yet again another concept from uh, one of our members, um, the president of our group, if you will, uh, Tim Liddy. Um, he, get, he came up with the ideas for the snail race, for the haunted amusement park, and now this, which is basically like a mythical, mythological world tree, based somewhat on like Norse mythology, how they have a, you know a, the world of nine, uh, the tree of nine worlds. Um, except we didn't want to copy exactly the Norse mythology; we wanted to come up with our own original worlds. There are eleven of them, um, and they're loosely based on the elements. Uh, the entire concept was originally to have a tree of different worlds, and then for World of Lights when the lights went out, the tree would disappear and it would look like a solar system. So if you saw it last night, that, that effect was actually pretty, uh, um, pretty solid. Uh, it, it, looked, it looked like a bunch of floating worlds. I, we were really excited about that, that. You know, it was a great concept and we liked what it looked like in our heads, but it actually came out that way. So uh, uh, right here we have our Harvest Realm. Um, that was uh, built by, um, and, I, and I feel terrible because I, I, they're newer members and I, I, I can't remember their names, it's Josh and uh, uh, some of the uh, gentlemen from all the floating islands over there. Um, do a lot of great work. They, I find them like two of the more inspiring people who post stuff online. Like the, the, the amount of detail and the, the uh, uh, new techniques that they show are just, to me, fascinating. I can't spend enough time looking at, at some of the stuff they've done. Uh, we decided that we wanted even the little kids to be able to enjoy everything. We didn't want them to see a bunch of wood from underneath. So when, when we told them that we wanted the, uh, the underneath done and they had water on the top, they built an entire coral reef underneath their realm. Uh, but this one is harvest and uh, we have a little temple here. Everyone's running the harvest and they're filling the cornucopia. Um, uh, next one over here we have Jem. Um, this was built by Jens uh, Rydland. He comes from Norway. Um, this is, you know, I'm not sure it's necessarily an element, but it is based on crystal and gem. Um, we have up here uh, Forge. Uh, this is uh, built by Phil Strotsma. He is uh, silversmith online. He's one of the Guilds of Historica guys. He's got a lot of great stuff over there in Wislug. And uh, we've got a, a goblins, uh, a little dwarf people. Uh, filling in a, uh, 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 forging a sword here. So we've got them pouring the, the molten steel into that form and they're gonna pull the sword out of it. They're, each, each realm, since it is kind of like, our, we're writing our own mythology, has a deity and they connect with each other in different ways. So right here we have the deity for the, uh, the forge realm and I love the uh, chain beard. Yes, I think that's that really giant guy, that's such a cool design there. <laughs> that, that, that's awesome. We had a couple different, uh, um, couple different options uh, for his head that he showed us. One had gears and then in the end when he actually built it, he surprised us with the chain beard and I thought that was, that was super creative. Yeah. I was really excited about that. Uh, right below it, um, kind of suffering from the heat that comes from the, the forge realm, is the thirst realm. And uh, here we have a, an original concept uh, drawing that Tim did when he first came up with the idea was this, this idea of this world that had lost all its vegetation, uh, lost, lost enough that all we have left over is a skeleton of a giant anglerfish. Uh, and uh, Lisa, Lisa, Parker, uh, uh, Lisa Pritchett now uh, <laughs> built this one. I think she did an amazing job getting the, this looks almost, I wish I could show you the sketch because it looks almost exactly like with what Ken, uh, Tim had conceptualized. Wow. We have Tim's snake over here, which is beautiful. That's been a really, uh, uh, I would say, popular one this weekend. Um, people uh, uh, um, kept calling it a dragon. Uh, but uh, the majority of people, uh, which, which uh, uh, got under Tim's skin a little bit, but the majority of people said, really like the snake, snake wearing the hat. <laughs> yeah, like a crown or something there, sort of like the Lord of the Rings ring, like incorporated into there? What, uh, what Tim originally wanted was for every deity to have a crown, so it would show that they were, uh, um, that they were, they were the deity of their realm. Now, the, some of the, the crown pieces are a little bit more expensive. They came in like Belleville sets or like Scala sets. So we weren't all able, we weren't all able to do so. Yeah. Uh, down here beneath, beneath Thirst, we have um, uh, Stag Hall, which was built by um, one of our members in France. His name online is uh, Bob, Bob Duquatre. Um, I assume that's how it's pronounced. I've never heard it uh, spoken out loud. Uh, but he built our Stag Hall. He sent us the instructions, so he was able to contribute without actually being here. Uh, we built that uh, uh, for him in his stead. If you move up just a little, or uh, about three quarters of the way to the tree, this is Tim's realm. So he did water, and his deity is the realm itself. So it's a turtle, and the world exists uh, inside his shell. So we've got the water world in there. We've got his triton. It shows that that's his crown, basically. And then we have got, we've got fish, dolphins, octopi, crabs, all sorts of things uh, living inside that world. As, as it was Tim's concept, this to me is the most fascinating. You could look at this for hours <laughs> and, uh, uh, and just keep finding new stuff. And what's amazing about this, too, is when we were building the tree, 
Um, we had he had it on the end of end of a, a, the wooden branch, and we we kept testing things with it. And we just drop it on the ground, pick it back up, drop it on the ground, pick it back up. Nothing ever fell off that. It looks super <laughs> fragile, but it's it's really solidly built. Um, so if you can't talk about some of the pieces he incorporated in there, because there's some crazy kind of looking pieces that he used to depict that world. It didn't he though? <laughs> so, so we've got like a lot of these you can tell are the the bionicle pieces back from the, the time where they did quite a bit of like underwater stuff. Um, so and then we have fiber optic cables from like the Exoforce sort of like uh, uh, days and and some of those sets that they they had. We've got the um, the transparent uh, pink uh, dinosaur spines, which I have a ton of those as well. I don't know where they came from, but uh, I. I I, I, uh, that, that's back in there. Um, there's something else in here that I love. Oh, right behind the uh, turtle's jaw. There's a new piece. It's that plant piece, that curly plant piece that came. Uh, this is in one like $35 okay. set. It's one of the new elf sets. And it's it just like, uh, that's what I mean by like the detail. You see like his jawbone is even kind of like fancy, you know? <laughs> So um, next uh, down, it, this okay. So this realm was originally just kind of like hanging out on the tree in other places. Um, this is one that I did. Uh, it's pollination, we're calling it, because it's a giant bee. <laughs> Uh, but we had the Earth Realm over here, and I can show you that when we're done. We have it on a table over there. It was the heaviest of all of them, and unfortunately, at one point in the weekend, the the branch gave way a little bit. Uh, it didn't fall off. Everything was fine. We just wanted to make sure we took it off so it did not end up falling off. Wow. And uh, we replaced it with this. Uh, we're calling it the pollination realm. It's making kind of a honeycomb underneath it, which it, which that had always been there. It's not like we made that at the last minute. Um, so the, you know, the, we're 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 showing a, a, um, sort of the circle of life and and how things are working together. We have a little Fabuland bear in there stealing some honey. Um, and then actually, when we were taking everything off the branch, um, I was the the bee is on an axle, and I had to kind of wiggle it back and forth a little bit to get it to get the bee off of the axle, which caused uh, Crystal's dragon here, which was uh, nominated for best creature, to fall to the ground and completely shatter about 10 minutes after they put the nomination flag on it. So <laughs> um, that was that was the most harrowing moment from the weekend. Actually, it's like a, a branch buckled and the the realm was fine, but then I knocked off. A dragon and completely <laughs> obliterated it. So this is my favorite concept on the entire tree is crystals. Uh, Crystal uh, is from uh, Australia. She builds with us every year, and she just like she has a real quiet ego. Not a lot of people are aware of her, but what she always does is like beautiful and sophisticated. And uh, like I said, uh, everyone has like a deity. Everyone has like a realm. The, the way their realms connect to the other ones. And so she wrote online. She's like, she's like, I think my concept's going to be a dragon. But the wings are leaves, and the veins in the in the uh, um, in the wings are the trunks of the trees. And he's protecting his egg. And when he pulls his wings over to protect the egg, it makes nightfall wow. on the tree. And we're like, I, I okay, yeah, go with that. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. And uh, I, she, it really came out exactly the way she said it would. It, it's it's my favorite thing on here. I think every all the details she ended up adding from the stars that are falling from the bottom of it to like. Just even the stars in the uh, um, in the leaves on her on the wings, it's just really made everything kind of come together. And then the egg that that he's protecting is the moon for the solar system, like or for the for the whatever planet. It all or ties together beautifully there, and even like the different shades of purple in the base are really nice as well. Yeah, it's, like again, it's a, she has a really good design sense. So like her her choices of colors are always really good. She said she's like I've never worked with black before, but she's like once it started going together, she's like this is gonna, definitely going to be a black dragon. So and it it did turn out beautifully. Uh, right beneath it, we have uh, um, online. His name is Gideon. In real life, his name is Jonas. He comes to us from Sweden, um, and this is the ice realm. Um, and there's a, uh, there are a lot of fun details in here as well. He got, um, I, we have like 15 satyrs on the tree uh, in this world with the, uh, uh, these white walkers on wolves. Um, he's done a lot with the, the lighting in his. Uh, during World of Lights, there's like a really eerie blue coming out of the temple itself. And then all the crystals coming out from underneath. Uh, it, re it really photographed well last night, but it's just really just beautiful to look at besides like photographing. It's a really good style. A lot of people have, have stopped and looked at this one. Um, Beneath that, uh, down here, we have uh, Satorfly Village. So we have our little satyrflies with butter, butterfly wings. This is another one that I built. Um, this was I did the roots of the tree at home just to see like we can get things going, kind of save save from our budget. I used my entire brown collection to build the roots of the trees, and then we brought that to Tim's house to build the rest of it with the stuff that we ordered through Event Bulk. Um, but the Satorfly Village was like kind of a way for me to get up to about 15 inches without using all of my brown, or, or, or with using all of my brown and being able to get up to uh, the 15 inches there. Um, 
and so it, the basic idea was like, yeah, we can have funguses in there. But then I'm like, yes, yeah, something needs to live in the funguses, and they need to be satyr flies. <laughs> um, above that, we have the Heart Realm. This is built by uh, uh, Gary Conley. He's Cornelius Murdoch online. Um, and this is a, a basic um, you know, wedding where people are bathing in blood. I, I, that's what it looks like to me. <laughs> a basic, you know, everyday event. <laughs> It looks to me like a scene from uh, 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 Indiana Jones, uh, but it's a wedding. They're in love, and this is a uh, heart is the realm, I believe. Is uh, I might have said love, but it's heart is the yeah. is the name of this realm. Um, and uh, we have we've had quite a few people like uh, Alyssa Kirkpatrick, uh, Vincent Kessels. Um, uh, um, I can't think, uh, why can't I think of his name? Ben Hauger, um, who have helped us by building all these frogs. Well, another one of my favorite things on the tree is this green, this lime green frog back here with the satyr jumping. Uh, uh, just fishing line. Uh, some of the fun uh, effects we were able to get uh, with the satyr flies and with the frogs and uh, some of these other things just with fishing line. I, I was super encouraged by that. I, I think we're going to play with uh, uh, some suspension a little bit more in some of the things we do in the future. The stars are, are suspended here. Um, add some extra element of depth there to the build. Without a doubt. And it's just, yeah, and fun. <laughs> um, here we have uh, uh, Kevin Anderson. He did our nature realm. Um, a lot of just gigantic flowers. This is one of our EB traditions, uh, your EB for Eurobrix uh, traditions. Over here on the, the far right, uh, lilac flower, we, uh, we have wh who we call Derek the Painter from Cleveland. He's been in all of our displays uh, since the snail display three years ago. So uh, um, that's, that you, you will, uh, if you look every year, he'll be in there somewhere. Um, and we are back to the, oh, my realm, <laughs> sorry, here in the center is uh, Nebula. So the way my realm connected to the, the the rest of it is the ship is filling itself with stars, and they're 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 bringing the stars from the nebula to the rest of the realms. We've got uh, hidden in spots on the tree like constellations. Um, the ship of uh, the fire ship is what brings the uh, um, the uh, the stars to the other places. Uh, it, this was a lot of fun. A lot of calluses on my uh, forefinger and thumb from all of the one by two uh, transparent plates I built with this year. I joked with them that every time I showed a work in progress, it was. It, it was completely different around the edges because every time I picked it up, parts of it would fall off and everything was just a one by two step. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't know exactly where that goes, but it doesn't really matter because it's a nebula and it's just, you know, flowing gases. I said that my element was, was basically gas, but it's like the element is all of the elements that come together to make stars. As we know, nebulas are star nurseries. My deity over here would be the nebula dragon uh, who is in love with the uh, nightshade dragon. Uh, we decided they're a couple. Uh, <laughs> That works. But yeah, this is incredible. The transparent piece. I love builds and incorporate large amounts of the transparent pieces like that. And I just think it, it really ties the rest of the realms together being in the middle there. I love it. Excellent. Thank you. I, we, were, we were really excited about how everything came together. And like I said, when we saw it during World of Lights last night, it was like it was it really was like kind of a feeling of a like of creative accomplishment that like someone had a really solid concept and then we all worked together to make it to make it happen, but we were all able to put our own individual character onto everything. And I think that's, that's, that's how we excel when we work together, if we allow ourselves the ability to be individually creative, but bring something together. And it's been really inspiring that this group has grown in its skill to work together over the year, and that we all really get along well together and enjoy working with each other. And it's, it's been quite a process. It, wasn't, it certainly wasn't all smooth. I don't know if you remember a, a display that we called Color versus Monochrome, but that's, a, that's one of the ugly parts from our past. But it's really, in, in working out all the kinks of how we work together, uh, getting to a spot where we work together what I, in what I feel personally is a very solid way um, is really starting to show itself and it just feels good. I mean, we have fun in this weekend. It's, it's our new Christmas uh, for us, like just being able to get together, work together, be creative and have fun and inspire other people. And that's one of, our, one of the things that we, we enjoyed about this is we had a lot of, it got a lot of attention. A lot of people would stop and photograph it. We'd get some crowds around it and just fun to know that we're, we're, we're doing that for other people too and we're bringing that, that fun sort of creative energy to other builders and other LEGO fans and the public and yeah. and uh, and your your uh, viewers <laughs> yes exactly and it's certainly eye catching you know it's great that you can walk all the way around it enjoy the whole build and everything so we talked about kind of the different realms if you can talk a little bit more now about maybe the structure of the main tree itself and the branches and how that came together oh sure right so we have we have Josh here uh, next to me who is uh, lives in in Chicago um, I live in Chicago and Tim lives over in Aurora so we got together on the weekends and uh, once we had the roots built we just started building uh, started building uh, uh, quadrants basically. Um, cause we needed to put everything together on site because they, we didn't have, uh, anything that would transport it over like a tall piece of wood with these roots stuck to the bottom. Right. So, uh, basically we just kept kind of practicing. We built, we put all the wood around the, the wood structures for the branches, uh, so that those would be ready to go. And then when we got it on site, uh, we, you know, we practiced it a few times, like kind of stacking everything together. Like we didn't want to drill the, um, 
the the branches in too much. We kind of used some some scrap wood that Tim had access to, so we didn't want to like we didn't want to tear it up. Um, so we got it here, and I was a little bit hasty. We were putting everything together, and I took one of the quadrants and I I stud studded it in, built it in, in the wrong spot, <laughs> and so then our, our our quadrants were just kind of off. And so what we ended up doing was t taking a taking apart a good amount of the work that we had done, oh. um, and rebuilding it all of us together. So about six hours on the first day, we rebuilt a good portion, probably from like the first four branches that are, are uh, uh, perpendicular to the roots. Um, th that, those all worked and I messed it up like a little bit after that. But then when we turned 45 degree angle, that's kind of like where the entire group just kind of came together and literally collaboratively built it together. <laughs> and it was fun. And there was very there was very little bickering. If there was any, it was probably from me, uh, to be quite honest, because that's that's what I do sometimes. And uh, But I, it was just fun to actually build together as a group and work together and like and literally collaborate and it was it was one of the, the best times I've had here just like kind of standing around laughing joking uh, and building this together uh, and you know as you're doing that and you're building a, the big chunks and just two by four bricks parts would fall off and we'd start over and like but it was fun yeah. it, it was a good time and it, it, it's a good group and we're, we're uh, uh, we enjoy the opportunity to work together that way Definitely, and the end product is amazing. I want to point out a couple of awards you guys won. So I see best sea vessel there. Is is that on the, your section uh, right there? Yes. Okay. Great. So congratulations on that. So that's like your transparent ship there. A uh, very unique. You obviously don't see a lot of boats that look like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, the I, I I was that was another one where like I would pick it up. I'd put it down an entire section would would come off because again it's the same thing and building something that has a structure out of that where where all of the options you have are basically one by two plates there's a lot of the one by two uh, slopes in there in in, in transparent orange but uh, um, they're, they're basically on the outside for texture <laughs> and uh, yeah so that that was a that was a huge challenge especially when it came to the deck and the base um, and uh, I I enjoy it when I when I put it up. When you're when you look at it as often as you do, it just becomes the boat that's on the shelf in your living room that you like. You have to bring the brick world. So like when people are looking at it and enjoying it, it's it, it brings it back to you. Look at it again in a different way where you finally step back for you and like, oh, I did build something kind of cool. And it's it you know it becomes fun to look at it again. So I was I was really happy to win to win Sea Vessel. It's not something I normally build. So yeah, and then I believe the whole collaborative won an award as well. Correct? Yes, we did. Okay. Um, it, it, this is our this is our uh, our third year. In a in a row, um, winning. If 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 the camera was on me, you'd see what a humble face I was making. <laughs> I was like it's <laughs> uh, so that that's a that that's a big uh, um, big accomplishment for us. We're very happy about that. Again, it's it and honestly, it, it is. I I would feel just as good about like the inspiration and people enjoying it as, as I would if we if we had not won. And, and you know, being nominated is certainly exciting. We had a lot of nominations uh, on our table and, and with the tree. Crystal's nomination for best creature was very well deserved. Um, and the, uh, um, but no, we're excited and we like having a winning streak. There's a lot of competition here. There's a lot of talented builder and it does, you just, you, you do, you get a little bit of a, um, a, a little bit of an ego boost when when you when you win something best of with with so many talented builders here, and uh, yeah, and we we're we have a a, a bit of a, an introverted group with a couple extroverts in there, but uh, yeah, we're competitive. You know, we we do enjoy a, a, a good competition, and we do certainly enjoy that that we've been able to uh, uh, knock out a few few wins here. So yeah. oh, do you guys have a second to look at the Earth Realm? Definitely, yeah. We, if you can just walk us over there, sure. So this here was the Earth Realm, uh, by, by, uh, built by uh, uh, M. K. Josh A. Is how I know him. I don't. I'm not sure I've ever met him in person. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, but this is uh, um, uh, a nice, uh, uh, a nice realm. I wish we'd been able to keep it up there. I really like the, the way the roots come out of the, the side of the tree. The, the lighting effect of, of the little the little Groot gods uh, uh, that were making the tree grow out of that space. It was it was a nice concept, and the little rock deity is a uh, um, is a clever little bipedal. Uh, 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 God there with it picking up the rocks. Uh, it, it was it was a it was a nice uh, 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 composition with all that together on the tree. Unfortunately, we couldn't keep it up there just for like you know safety sake, and we want to be able to give it back to him in one piece on top of that. But uh, but that was uh, that was our eleventh realm that we replaced with the pollination. So. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. Well, that's a great way to end the video. Taking a look at this awesome realm over here as well. So thanks so much for spending the time to show us all around the build. It's really incredible. I love. I think my personal favorite builds are always the collaboratives here at Brick World. Uh, seeing all those and the way that people work together is just amazing. So yeah. uh, you guys certainly knocked it out of the park. So I really appreciate your time here. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for letting me ramble. <laughs> <laughs>